some light in to kind of emphasize it. And I'll talk about some of the psychology of that. Um, uh, in addition, I'll drink coffee. Um, and also, if you don't know this, for people who are here, uh, we live stream these now on Thursdays at noon. So right now we're being live streamed. Hi, Mom. And uh, if you want to watch it from home, let's say you can't get here. It's a Thursday. You should come. In fact, if you're watching online now, now why are you not here? Really? But if, you're, if you can't get here, you can watch it. You're on a date. You're on a date on Thursday, right? Some of you, you, know, you had lunch date or whatever. You're, you're in church. You know, you're at visiting the in-laws. You can always get on your phone or whatever uh, and go to Adorama's uh, YouTube page, which is youtube.com slash Adorama TV, and see myself and Dave uh, and various other people. It's not always Valeria. <laughs> we're not even sure if she's going to make it through the whole thing, but this is her first time, so we'll see. We'll try to be gentle. Um, and we're going to see what we can do. So um, I will try... Was that all the stuff that I say? Was that all the ads? It's been a while. So welcome back, guys. I haven't been here for a little while. We had Passover. Hopefully people got passed over. Um, then, then we were in NAB in Las Vegas where we uh, did a bunch of videos. So if you haven't seen it, um, and if you don't usually go to Adorama TV, please check out those videos because you can see uh, the various cool video equipment that we get to look at, which uh, I don't really understand that much, but Dave does. So I take them with me and we figure it out. Um, anyways, we're going to use, uh, I think, Constant Lights today. We decided to use constant lights, um, so that should be kind of fun. Uh, we have uh, some various lights from Lowell and Ari. I think we have a dado light. Um, I'll try to say the equipment I'm using as we go through it. If I don't say what something is and you want to know, uh, please ask and I will tell you. Um, so I'll start with the camera because that's the first thing that we're going to use, I guess. We have a Nikon today. It's a, a D5, I think, and it's got the 24 to 70 lens on it. And uh, as you would expect, as soon as we put the Nikon on the tripod over here, the Canon rep came in and was like, oh, you're using a Nikon. But, um, we're using an icon with 2470 uh, and a Manfrotto tripod that we always use. People always ask me what the tripod is, so this is a 055 tripod. It's pretty cool. It's not that expensive, I don't think. I can't remember. I try to not look when I buy stuff because it would just be painful to know what everything costs. I just, just take, take it, you know. Um, but yeah, we have the tripod and, uh, and we have Valeria. So we're going to start off, I think, with uh, just doing kind of a standard setup. Should we do it that way? Yeah. Yeah, like we'll set it up like a regular portrait, right? And then we'll start manipulating it to adjust our, our, our contrast. So if you're going to set up a regular portrait, uh, kind of a typical thing to do might be to take a softbox. This is a softbox right here. Um, this is a Lowell Reefa light. So it's a softbox. It's about, I don't know, 18 inches or so. Um, good for a singular person. Inside of it is a light, obviously. Um, you've got your light bulb inside. It's 250 watts. We throw the diffusion on the front. The diffusion now becomes our light source. Real, yes. Yeah, it puts out. Uh, it, how much heat does it put out? Three thousand two hundred Kelvin. <laughs> yeah, it's point source. Yes. Yeah, it's it's it's. No, it does. I mean, it's a two hundred fifty watt bulb. You wouldn't want to touch it with your fingers for sure. Um, I find that with uh, modern cameras and. Uh, relatively fast glass. You don't need to use tons of lights. It used to be like if you were a stills photographer and you wanted to use a constant light source, you'd be buying like a, like a thousand watt light to try to get enough light to pump through for your you know, slow speed film that you'd have with a filter on top to measure. Uh, this is good. We're gonna be totally fine with 250 watts. Uh, we'll be able to light her right up, I'm sure. So yes, it does get warm. If you're gonna use hot lights, keep in mind that uh, you wanna have a little bit of a cool off period maybe uh, before you put them in back in your bag. So yeah, so this is 250 watts. We just plug it in, simple enough. You know, if you're using constant lights, if you, this is something that you want to do, um, be wary of the amount of uh, total wattage that you're drawing. Um, you don't want to generally go over about 1500 on a circuit. Uh, most circuits can handle uh, 1800, so I say 15 to be safe. Um, you know, and obviously don't plug it in where there's like a hair dryer and a microwave and a refrigerator. You know, try to find a place where things aren't plugged in. You'll be good to go. Um, so we're 250, we should be fine. Although this building was built before the, 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 the dawn of time, so we'll see if it actually shuts down the entire building when we turn it on, but no, it's 250 watts, should be totally fine. Yeah, the whole website goes down. If it suddenly goes dark on YouTube, you know what happened, but yeah. So yeah, so we'll turn this on and, uh, and we'll light her up with it. So again, with most portrait lighting scenarios and situations, you wanna take your light and put it as close as possible. The reason why you wanna do that is because the larger the light source relative to your subject, the softer it will be, and generally speaking, softer light, meaning that the, the shadows gradually go from highlight to shadow, is generally a more flattering way to light somebody. Um, and, 
No, I'll do like a 45. Yeah, so we're just gonna do like really classic. This is not how I would light her at all, but we're gonna do it because that's what we're doing. You can face the camera if you want. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so we've got the light here. We're lighting her up. We're gonna end up having to kill some of this overhead light in here. This is, again, one of the issues or thoughts about when you're gonna use a constant light source, you have to think about what other light might be in the space, right? If we're using flash, we could eliminate all that. But we're not using flash, so we can. Yeah, did you just adjust the chair? I've been trying to adjust that chair for about two years, so it's good that it's adjusted now. So yeah, so we'll, we'll try to turn off any light that's directly hitting her, which I think this one might be. Yeah, there we go. Thanks. Thanks, Seth. Yes. Dan, did you mention a color mm -hmm. I haven't, but I will. Thank you for that question. So these are tungsten lights. Their color temperature and also their heat at the point source is uh, 3,200 Kelvin. So again, back in the days of film or whatever, that might have been an issue. Uh, with a digital camera, we can simply set our white balance to tungsten and we will get a neutral uh, color balance. Um, if you are mixing it with things like, let's say, windows, that could be an issue. And actually, we'll play around with that a little bit later. Um, Right now, though, we want it to be neutral, so we'll set our white balance to tungsten. Um, I am tethered into Capture One right now. Capture One is basically a software that's designed for when you're shooting with your camera. You can just, with this uh, USB cable here, you can see I'm plugged in from Tether Tools. Um, and finally, for people who watch this or come a lot, I finally brought my jerk stopper down. <laughs> I've had this thing forever, and I can always forget it. Because I don't use my camera when I do this. People give me a camera, and I use it. So I have my own jerk stopper, and I brought it. Um, it makes it so hopefully we won't pull the cable out all day. We'll see if that works or not. Um, Dave's pretty rough over there with the camera. Um, so this is a, called a jerk stopper. And basically what it is, is it stops jerks. Um, I'm probably not even using it correctly. Tether Tools is probably watching right now. I'm like, what are you? But basically you attach it to the little place where your strap goes. Um, and yeah, I'm going to go like that. Well, no, now I'm going for it. We're full Monty now. We're turning it. There we go. It's this little guy right here. Not this. This is the thing so you can't steal the camera. <laughs> this right here, though. Got it? Good. All right. That's the jerk stopper. Thank you for asking. Jerk stopper, will, uh, Ted the Tools will now pay me, for, what was it, 25 cents every time that they mention it? I think so. Keep track of that. Um, yeah, so that way we don't pull it out of the computer. Uh, and essentially, we're doing what's called tethered shooting. We can completely control our camera from the computer if we want. Um, if you were doing product photography or something where the camera was like in a permanent setup, you could actually fire it from here and everything else. Um, for us, we're just using it so that we can uh, simply show you the pictures really quickly up on the screen. Um, note to people that are here live that these are TVs, not monitors. So they're not going to be 100% color correct. And you'll see as we do it that they'll look different. And I'll kind of point out which one is closer to the computer. It's usually that one, but sometimes it changes for some reason. Um, so yeah, so I guess we'll just use the meter in the camera to establish our exposure, right? Your camera has a meter in it. You could theoretically put it on like aperture priority or something like that, but I, like, I tend to like to shoot in manual. Um, so all we gotta do is put our camera, um, you know, uh, at a place where, where our meter is in the center. It's a portrait, we're probably gonna wanna shoot around what, F4-ish? So we'll probably shoot around F4. We'll shoot it, you know, I don't know, 60th or ish of a second, maybe 125th? 50th, okay, so that way, you know, we, we try to avoid camera movement as much as possible. We are on a tripod, but, uh, you know, Valeria's got a lot of energy. Yeah, so she does, I knew it. Um, and then we're just going to adjust our ISO up and down to get a spot where we're safe. Now, those three things, right, what they call the exposure triangle, they meaning Mark Wallace, who I steal that from every single time. Thanks, Mark. Um, that, that triangle, your aperture, your ISO, and your shutter speed, Adjusting any of those will adjust your exposure in this case. What we want to do is find the right balance. If our camera is tremendously good in, in, at high ISO, uh, then we can go to 800, 1600, 3200 ISO if, if we want, right? If our camera's not that, then maybe we want to give ourselves more shutter speed or more aperture, you know, because we could go a little bit wider on the aperture, although I don't like to usually go much wider than F4 um, because at this distance, we're going to start getting like only parts of her face in focus if we do that. Um, which is fine for some effect, but not typically how I shoot a portrait. Um, and yeah, so let's see what we get. Make What's happening? Oh, I didn't know what you were pointing at. We're turning off all the lights, so we're only seeing, for the most part, our light. Actually, let's take a picture without this light, just to see. Okay. Well, we'll do both. Do the light first. So ideally, you want to try to eliminate as much light as possible. They, I asked, and they won't let us turn off all the lights in the store. I know. So we have some light in here, but 
Yeah, yeah. So that, right, that's the meter in the camera. That gives us kind of a nice uh, overall exposure on her. Not bad, right? Kind of basic. Did a pretty good job. And what's our settings there? We're at, uh, oh, only ISO 200. That's not bad, is that right? 200, yeah, F4, ISO 260 of a second. That's not too terrible. Um, this camera, you know, will do a good job uh, at, at, uh, at much higher ISOs if we want. You will notice too that we've got a couple of things going on here. She's nice and kind of evenly lit with a soft-ish light, right? We've got the shadows from her are, uh, ooh, I'm backlit. Uh, the shadows are kind of interesting on her face. Uh, if she looks towards the light a little bit, it'll probably look even better, you know? because we'll get nice even light coming across her face. You see the color is nice and clean um, because we're set at tungsten white balance. Right? Yeah, right? Nice and simple. Now, if I was gonna make a kind of a standard portrait, which we are, I might then throw in like a hair light. Should I use the 300? I'll use the 300, because it's over here. This is an Arri 300. You think so? Um, I could use the 150 then. Oh yeah, what is? I am using a light meter. So the question on the live stream is why am I not using a light meter? But I am using a light meter, right? There's a light meter in my camera. So because of the way that I'm lighting this, which is basically a very frontal light, and because I have a center weighted, meter, center weighted or matrix metering on my camera, it's very easy for me to, uh, to meter her using the camera. I could use a handheld light meter, and that's very useful, especially if you need to set up before your subject gets there. You can meter and set all your lights really quickly, but because she is my subject, I can simply use the, the camera meter, uh, which I will uh, do in many cases. So, yeah. Yeah, let's switch to 150. So this is an ARRI. Um, now, if I was using flash, I would definitely have to use a meter, right? Because the meter on my camera doesn't meter flash, uh, unless you're using TTL, but that's a whole other thing. So basically, I, I would have to use a, a, a meter if I was using flash. So this is an Area 150, so it's 150 watts, right? It's a Fermnell type light, meaning that it has a glass lens in the front. That glass lens gives us the ability to focus the light. It also makes the light kind of a little bit more even. Um, it also looks cooler, you know. Um, it, does, it is equipped with barn doors, so uh, we can shape the light. That's going to be important for a hair light because we don't want light, let's say, to hit her in the, the nose or something, right? We want to kind of just get it so it gives her a nice little rim. And again, this is 150, so now we're 250 plus 150. There's a lot of math in photography, right? So we're, we're still far within our re range of what we can plug in. Yeah, you can turn. Sure, go for it. You can actually, if you want to turn the China ball on, it might be the easiest way to do it. I don't know if that's enough. Yeah, that'd probably be fun. Is that better? Can you see me? They just couldn't see what this was. Yeah, yeah. No, no, perfect. Thank you. Yeah, as long as we're not taking the picture, feel free. Thanks, Seth. So, uh, they're just here to make me, you guys just make me look good. That's all I care about. As good as possible. All right. Oh, subtle. Yeah. Nice. So we've got a little separation, right? Now, the, the, the hair light or separation light, right? By the way, we call Dave Dave the hair light, Bruska, because he's the master of it. But <laughs> this is really subtle and really nice. It's a really good use of it. If you like to go a little bit more glamorous with it, right, we could make it a little brighter, right? And how can we do that? Right. Well, we can't give it more power because it's as bright as it can be, so moving it closer, exactly what we do. So we can simply just take the light and move it in closer, and then it will get brighter. The other way we could do it is we could move this one back further and then change our exposure, right? So just, just to confuse people. But yeah, we can just move it in closer. You'll see, by the way, how when I do the hair light, it's not nearly as nice as when Dave did it. Oh, I think it's in Matrix, right? We're in Matrix metering? Yeah, yeah, it's like the standard matrix uh, Nikon metering, which is kind of, it, it does like, there's like a little uh, elf inside the camera and it does all kinds of weird stuff and it looks at the pixels and that, it's like their advanced metering. If you are having issues though with the metering, um, in a situation like this with a darker background, you might want to go to spot metering. Spot metering will allow you to only meter against the skin tone. So now it's like a little bit brighter. See, we brought it up the hair light a little bit. 
So you can play around with that a little bit. So let's make you more, since we're doing that, now we're gonna go, like, let's make her a little bit, like, let's make her really glamorous, right? Can you be glamorous? I was told you could be glamorous. Okay, boom. So I was told, she, I was like, I was like, Fernando, I need to get a glamorous lady. And he was like, oh, I got them. Yeah, all right. All right, so I think for this one, we'll switch to the little baby stand, right, and put it behind her. What do you think? Yeah, why not? This is a little baby uh, C stand, uh, often used when you want to stick something behind somebody. Uh, and again, as noted earlier, these do get a little bit warm. So, um, you know, if you're going to handle them a lot, you might want to wear gloves. But uh, after many years of making cookies, um, baking cookies, uh, my, my fingers are pretty good. Am I breathing really heavily? Could you hear that? Was that me? Okay. How's that? Is it, is it in the shot? Cool. Should it be higher? Okay. Okay. So you, you probably notice, uh, for people that are here, maybe less so online, it's maybe harder to see, but uh, too high? I just tilt it. Oh, tilt it. Okay. You know, I, I had Dave looking through the camera. It's, it's always a good idea, and this is a, actually the one question or comment that I get all the time is that, like, you have Dave. I, you can't have Dave. I'm sorry. He's mine. But, uh, you know, there's tons of people that are interested in photography, and you, you must have friends, I got to imagine. So have somebody help you. you don't, they don't have to be a professional photographer that's there helping you. Just another set of hands. Anybody could have moved that. I mean, I did it. Anybody could move that light up and down, right? Dave's looking through the camera. It's going to save a lot of time trying to do it all yourself. You have somebody help you. Um, it makes life go a lot easier. So now, basically, he looked through the camera while I was moving the light. That way, we know the light's not in the shot, unless she moves her head. We'll see how that works. <laughs> Should we do it from the center? Yeah. Now, one thing that, that I like to do when photographing, especially photographing females, is I like to keep my light in the center of the face or do what's called a, a butterfly light. First of all, I just like butterflies. They're really pretty. Although, uh, a lot of butterflies are actually white. Did you know that? Because people always think of the monarch butterflies that are really colorful, but the, most butterflies are actually just white. Um, tons of white butterflies up near me. But anyways, butterfly lighting is generally central light. It basically comes from the center. It creates a small butterfly-type shadow under the nose, uh, thus the name. And it's, it generally gives a very even light across the face, which is, which is generally flattering, and also tends to narrow the face, especially with a smaller light source, because it creates kind of some shadow under the cheekbone. It also, if you've got a little bit of a double chin like me, the shadow will help be eliminated. So a lot of beauty light is done with this butterfly style lighting, which is just simple as getting the light overhead. Again, keeping it close, uh, relatively, tilting it down. It's all going to be a matter of balance to get it exactly right for our individual subject. One trick to it, though, and you'll see this a lot if you start looking at a lot of beauty photography, is oftentimes it's good to have them keep their chin up a little bit so that it's almost parallel to the light source. Um, because if it's not, right, if my light is tilted, right now it's pretty flat, but if he tilts it a lot more like that, right, and she keeps her head straight, then the top of her head will be closer to the light than her chin, which will make the light uneven. But if she tilts her head up slightly so that it's in line with the light, she'll have even light across her face. That's why a lot of times in beauty you see their chins up a bit, and that's part of it. It's, it's to create that evenness across the face. If for some reason you can't do that, another solution would be to put some more diffusion up here to lower this part of the light. You know, there's lots of ways to do it, but that's a, that's a basic way to do it. So what's going on? Having a good day? How are you doing? I had to pick you out because you were taking a note. Are you taking a note or are you writing me something? Okay, good. I have to make sure I say things right if people take notes because you're going to call me out on it and be like, earlier you said what? Okay, so this is a Lowell Rifa, not that kind of Rifa, uh, 244. Don't they call it Rifa? Isn't that a, yeah, okay. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, it's basically a small softbox. It's a Lowell Rifa 44. They, it has 250 watt bulb in it. Oh, oh wow. You look like you just got it from a... Yeah, the hair, the hair light's kind of weird. It's a little bit of an off hair light. Yeah, yeah you know why? Because I did it. Can you fix that? He's not going to fix it for me, is he? No. It's too high, I think. Is it too close? It's too close. I think it's, it's the accommodation Yeah. It was, uh, it was too close. 
Okay. How's that? Better? Oh, this way. I'm going the wrong way. I thought you were looking through a view camera. There we go. I think so. I'll stand back here while you take the picture that way if you have to move it again. Oh, interesting. You know what it is, too? It's partially. Can I fix your hair? Sure, please do. Yeah. Fix it, fix it. It's, it's good, but it's only fluffy on one side. Do okay. whatever you want. There we go. <laughs> okay. All right. Try that. You're too kind. Oh, uh, yes. You, you are. Good. Okay. I, I would make it more messy, but uh, how's that? Ah, nice. There we go. All right, so now it's like a little more even. I mean, obviously, this brings up a good point, though, right? If you're going to heavily backlight somebody, you're going to get some flyaways. What you might want to do, and I would have done if we didn't do this the very first thing, is you might want, right, let's just do it. Mess up your hair. Yeah, get it, right? She's glamorous. For some reason, messy hair is glamorous. At least I like to think that, because my hair is always messy. Yeah, get this. What if we do go low with the backlight? What do you mean low? How's that? Is that too much though? No, you can't see it? You want to bring it up? We're going for the Argentinian thing. Right? You know, no, nobody knows that anymore. It's been too long now. Oh. There was a guy from Argentina who was here, like, what was that? It must have been six months ago. That's me, I dwell on things. And he, everyone, he was like, could you put the light right behind her? No, it's better though, it's getting there. Yeah. Well, that's a background you can buy. <laughs> it is. You can buy my, my, you know what it is? It's not bright enough either. I think we need to use a 300. Okay. I want to go for it. We're going full Argentinian here. Oh, yeah. We want lens flare. Oh, yeah. No, this is glamour. Well, how about we double backlight then? Okay. Yeah. No, no. Let's do it. Let's double backlight. Okay. We're doubling up. All right, so we're going to double backlight. So, because I want to get this really kind of glow, and it's kind of a pain in the butt, and it's going to limit her to uh, oh, two three hundreds. Oh, okay. Wow, Dave's going for it. Oh no, I wow. Dave said, "Go for it." We are going to blow her away. This is going to be so nineteen eighties music video. So these, now we've now switched to a 300 watt uh, light, which will give us uh, one stop more power, right? From 150 to 300. So I did math. Good. <laughs> what, what puppet? Could you plug that in for me? Just unplug whatever you see over there, it doesn't matter. No, I'm just kidding. No, underneath yeah. that, under, underneath there should be a, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Yep. I think so. If all of a sudden the live feed stops, you see this young lady right here, right? She's doing it. Uh huh. What do you think? What would you like? All around, right? Yeah, we want. We're going full terrible '80s glamour. So we're gonna. We're going like all around the head. There's gonna be so much light going on here. There's gonna be more light than you've ever seen in your life. This is gonna be like a dream sequence. <laughs> Hold on, we're going dream sequence. It's, it's happening. This is what happens when I'm away for a while. And the... All right, so here we go. Boom, all right, that's one. Am I too close? I think I am. Okay. All right, so I'm flooding the light out. Oh, there we go. You want to hit the lens a little bit? And her, yeah. 
You know that's going to hit her nose, though? A bit here is more. OK, so we flooded the light out. So basically, these lights are focusable, right? Um, when you focus a light, it basically condenses the light. It makes the, the circle smaller, but it also makes it brighter and, and less even. If you, if you were to take this light and point it at the wall when it's focused, it'll be tremendously bright, and then it kind of like goes out. If it's flooded, that's, that uh, spread is much more subtle and much more even. So we want to flood it so that we don't get the hot spots so much. We want it to kind of be like evenish and bright. Is it intense and less? And it's less intense, 100%. Yeah. OK, that's actually not as terrible as I thought it was going to be. <laughs> All right, good. That's actually, wow, OK. We know what we're doing. This is not my first rodeo. It's my second. So that's good. So it's a double bank. That's yeah. That they were saying. Like. Yeah, that's great. Now, OK, so we have to fully lead now. Now we have our light that we know what we want. We want this like cheesy, like late 80s pop light, right? So she's got it now. Now we have to work her for it. So you got to be like, OK. See, I did that away from the camera. <laughs> After, we'll do a circle on the background, right? Oh, you want to do a slash? Oh, you want... Oh, my God, yes. We have to add that after. Okay, we're going to add something, but let's just do this first. Okay. We're doing it. We're going for it. Is this like... She's going to be like... That was the instruction I gave. I give a good model instruction. I don't know what his emote, what his emote was. Did you yeah, she knows what it is. And you got to do it with the hair that you get the... All right, she's got it. We never tell the models what we're going to do ahead of time because they would never come. They would just be like, well, uh, no, no, thank you. You don't pay enough for that. She's, Dave wasn't alive back then. I wasn't alive. In the, in the, in the, uh, the 90s? Uh, yeah. Yeah, Dave was, born, Dave was born in 2004. You ready? You got it. I, I, I know you can do it. This is basically you in your mirror when you were 12. Who is what? Dancing, head of the class. <laughs> More chin up though, but that's pretty good. That's not bad. It's it's very bedroom. We got it. Okay, it's glam, glam bedroom glamour. Could we? Could you? Could you sing the song from Head of the Class? Was there a song? I don't know if there was one. That's the name of the show, right? Head of the Class with the, all the kids, and they're like in high school, but they're actually old kids. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, that was probably from the 90s, though, right? Oh. Do you know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm saying. I, 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 always somebody knows. I, as long as one person knows what I'm talking about, then I don't feel like I'm crazy. Yeah, yeah and then the girl went on to be in that stripper movie. You know, that, see, now you smart, Sal. You knew. Okay, that's what. Yeah, Saved by the Bell. That's what it's called. Thank you, Seth. Saved by the Bell. Yeah. 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 So that was basically, that's basically what we're going for here. So let's get, let's get one, and then we'll add the hearts for a final touch. So you want that, you want... You want that, you like... The same by the bell book. Yeah, like the... Yeah. So, like, I'm a high schooler. She is a high schooler. Yeah. Oh, I like that. Yeah. I like Dave's yeah, instruction. That was good. Yeah. 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 You're like a little Irish step dance. It's a lot There you go. So it's kind of glamoury. It's kind of fun. Um, because, because it'll be awesome, let's, let's, let's do the filter. Well, I know, but this will be cooler. Yeah, I know. We're not trying to go exactly for the show. That was just the reference that I could think of. Oh, there you go. That's what we want. That's it. Yeah. Seth has it. <laughs> you are the man. <laughs> he just, he was like, <laughs> I will promote your show. What's your show? Oh, that you, oh, Seth's going to be here teaching a class on the 17th. When's the 17th? That's next week. I am using Capture One. Capture One 10. Um, yeah, Capture One 10, which I just upgraded recently. It's pretty good. I w I'm super cheap, so I always skip one generation until like you can't do it anymore. I was actually in Vegas uh, for WPPI, and I had to teach a class with a Sony camera, and it just I, it wouldn't <laughs> it just wouldn't work. I was like, okay, uh, so I had to upgrade. I mean, I could have done the free Sony one, but why well, do that when I use it all the time? So I paid the hundred bucks. Well worth it. Set to use the capture one all the time too. Yeah, 
Questions, thoughts, concerns? No concerns? I like your glasses too. Are they slightly tinted or is that just the way the light is? Uh, they're made for computers. Oh yeah, no, it's nice. I like that. I always see cool glasses and I want to let go that way, but I feel like I just, I can't pull it off. I just got to go with basic. So starting with minimum setup, um, I mean, if you're, we're not going to do that right now, uh, but if you were trying to just start in lighting in general and you wanted to kind of like, what's the first thing I should get? What's the most minimum thing? I would get a speed light, a small flash made by your, your, your camera manufacturer. Is that what you said too? Um, it's not something that I use all the time, but it's something that you'll always use. Like it's, I keep it in my bag. Um, you know, when I used to do a lot more kind of magazine stuff and I would travel around, I'd always have like my Profoto lights in a big case. But then if I just had to do something fast, speed light's always there, right? It's a good way to learn lighting and it's relatively inexpensive. Um, although I recommend buying the best one you can afford because, uh, you know, a lot of reliability and the fact that they'll last. Um, but yes, what's that? Oh, a fan would be amazing. Hold on, we can do that. I take, I take requests. I'm like a jukebox. We're going to... Uh, I wish I had a fog machine. Let's put that on the list. Okay. All right. Who's going to be the fan? Have you done this before? Okay. But you get the idea, right? You just go. Yeah. There she is. There she is. Oh. oh. Okay. Oh, yeah. Fan. Come on now. I think so. You got it. See the things you learn if you come to New York? All right. We're team now. Yeah, we're it. That's it. And again, this goes back to what I said earlier. Let's ask somebody. This is a, you know what? Ha I swear I've been outside sometimes wanting to shoot something, and then somebody will walk up to me and be like, oh, what are you doing? And I'll be like, oh, I'm taking a portrait. Hold this reflector. <laughs> I mean, they do it. People just do it. It's weird. They don't give you money, though, because I've tried that, too. Give me money. They're like, oh. but they'll hold a reflector. Just don't break that. That's sets and he'll kill me. You can do it whenever you want. She likes it. Yeah. <laughs> can somebody feed her grapes? Is that the fan? Oh, no, the main light is 250 watts. So we're 250 out of the reefa, and we're 300 out of each of the backlights. What's interesting about the reefa light in general, uh, I love Lowell, by the way. I, 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 Lowell is like, if you're gonna start off in hot lights, like if you're a filmmaker, you wanna do both things, this is a great brand to get into when you're first starting because it's relatively inexpensive uh, for what you get. But the reefer is designed to be a softbox, right? So if you noticed earlier when I opened it up, the, the bulb is stuck out in the center of it. So it's actually really efficient. So you get a lot of power out of it for the fact that it's 250 watts. Um, if you were to get a small softbox and put it in front of this 300 watt area, it would not be as powerful because you're just blasting the thing from the back. Like it's just not exactly the same. So if you like soft boxes, a reefa is a good thing to have. Yeah, yeah, that's it. See that? This is what happens here. You're gonna hold that before you even start. All right. Uh, Questions while we're, we're setting up our, we totally went off course, as always. Um, any questions while we're waiting, though, about other random things that are somehow related in some way? While we're waiting, since you have the fan, I need a photographer. I didn't see every hand go up. <laughs> well, you have to use that camera. Who wants to use this Nikon camera? It is a pretty nice camera. Oh, yeah. oh, it's too late. No, it's too, no, I already said, I already said, did, I like how you got ready. No, 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 well, Dave was gonna jump in, but you can do it, you're the photographer. I like how you got ready. You're like, hold on, let me put my scarf on. <laughs> when we be a photographer, I gotta have the scarf here. Oh, <laughs> we could blow it, do you want another wind on you with the scarf? Okay. Okay, so now we have the hearts. You've, you've, you've got your uh, assistant here with the fan. Have at it. We're just all watching you and we're gonna judge. <laughs> yes. Perfect. Oh, don't, don't break it, it's only a D5. 
<laughs> what happened? Oh. Remember, you're head of the class. You're like, no, I keep saying head of the class. Was that a thing? Okay, it was a thing too. Okay, I thought so. Did that have Ricky Schroeder in it or something? Yeah. Yeah, see? That's. Oh, that is amazing. Okay, let's get a good, get a big smile. You're very high schooly. There you go. There you go. Right. Right, so we have some hearts on the background. We're using a dado light uh, projector. Let's see, can you work towards the camera though? Come closer here so you can look towards the camera. We want big eyes. Yeah. Yeah. So, so in the back we have a dado light, which is again another constant light source with a projection attachment on it, and we're throwing a gobo back there. <laughs> What, 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 what just happened here? What, what, what's going on with this? Try, all right. I think we've lost control again. <laughs> We're losing control here, but that's okay. So maybe work towards the camera so we can get a nice shot so I can advertise this thing again. <laughs> Gotta think to the future. Oh, wow, what happened there? Oh, Dave took the color out. It's so stark now. It's no longer high schooly. Now it's like bad Tinder. Let's put yes. the color back in. <laughs> I am swiping to the right. <laughs> the right is bad, right? I was oh, right, left. I'm swiping to the left. Okay, well. <laughs> yes, so all of our lights are tungsten balance. Whenever you're working with a light source, whether it be daylight or tungsten or whatever, as long as you're, all your lights are the same, it's as simple as just setting the camera. 3200, yeah. I think we probably, he probably just set it on tungsten, I think. Let me just see. Can't she creep? Huh? She can't creep in. Yeah, you can move the camera. Yeah, there's like a tungsten mode. Um, interestingly enough, the, tung the tungsten modes on different cameras are sometimes slightly different uh, as far as the actual temperature they give you. But uh, yeah, the lights themselves are 3200, so it should theoretically work. Oh, now they're pink. Well, it's like a, a light, pink. Yeah. Very pale pink. Okay, very Valentine's. We missed that though, Valentine's is over, right? Did you have a good Valentine's Day? You have to say work it. Work it. Work it. Oh, there you go. <laughs> there we go, that's better. Now, um, which direction am I swiping? Right. Okay. Right is good, left is bad. All right, good. That's probably what I've been doing wrong. All right, so, good. All right, so we're moving on, I think. What do you think? You got it? You feeling happy? Um, I was not that good. Okay, so let's, let's get a look. Get, 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 get big. Yeah, get that big look into the camera. Get, get, get your energy up and then wait for the good wind. There it is. That was the good wind. Work with the wind. There we go. There's a lot of factors going on here, right? We've got the, yeah, that's what I'm saying. We got it. Yeah, you got to control the, the, the wind. I don't know. I blame the online for this because I, I wouldn't have got the wind machine out. But. All right, here we go. Okay, cool, yeah, let me go through everything uh, so we know where we're at. Um, somehow these people jumped up here and took control of the set and I have no idea what's going on here anymore. Um, but here we are, we were kind of uh, playing around with like a standard kind of setup and we kind of switched to more of a glamoury thing because uh, I don't know, that's where my mind went automatically. Um, so we have overhead, we have a, a Lowell Reefa 44, which is a 250 watt tungsten light. Um, it is a soft box, okay? It's about 18 inches or so. So it's a relatively soft light. It's not super, super soft. I mean, 18 inches is not huge and it is backed up a bit, but for kind of a beauty glamor look, it's nice to have a little bit of a punchy light. It gives us nice shape to the cheeks, gives us nice, you know, em emphasizes the cheekbones. Um, in the back, we have two Arri 300s. So these are 300 watt lights. There, you were using barn doors to keep the light so it doesn't spill onto her nose and also keeping it off the background for the most part. Um, so we get ourselves nice control here. This is giving us that halo light around her. 
right? And then finally, our fourth light, because as we all know, you get paid by the number of lights you use. So the fourth light that we're using is a dado light. The dado light has a, a projection attachment on it. That's actually a 150 watt light. Um, and, and in front of it is basically a projector. And that projector can be used for a lot of things. And what we're using it for is throwing a gobo pattern, uh, which happens to be hearts. Um, you could also throw uh, clovers, horseshoes, rainbows. Is that all of them? And stars. I don't know. It's, oh, there we go. <laughs> um, you can throw all the whatever patterns you want. Um, you could actually throw logos back there. So it is actually an effective tool, even if you're not just goofing around. And we did put a gel in there to give us that pink color originally. We're using an Icon D5 with a unlimited memory card, apparently, uh, with, with an Icon D5 with a 2470. I'm just messing with you. Um, and we are tethered into Capture One. Oh, that's nice. Let's do star streaks. Uh, by the way, I think, if I noticed that as it was going by, the background can be focused and defocused as well. So you can actually make the background sharp or, or blurry using the attachment. Like, go ahead and take a shot now. Like, if you're doing something more like noir, you have to actually take the picture, though, so people can see. You got to take the picture. Now, we, we, we've recruited you. So now we've got, like, a sharper background. Oh, wow, well, she's yelling at him there. Right? Versus the A picture. The shutter speed is a 60th of a second. Uh, we're shooting at 200 ISO, and we're shooting at F4. So, yeah, I mean, she's moving. I'm sure if we punch into these, we'll probably have a little bit of motion blur. If we were really trying to actually do this... Uh, you know, with a frozen subject, being this camera in particular, that's really good at high ISO, I'd probably go up to like 800 ISO and give us a little more shutter speed. Um, it really depends on your camera as to where you can be. All right, I'll be back later if you guys want to. Okay, all right, so let's try something else. That was fun though. So yeah, we've got this kind of nice, fun, glamorous light. And, and you know, we let it set our, a good job guys. Uh, we, we let it set our tone, right? We wanted to do something fun and glamorous and, and uh, and that's, that's what we got, right? There we go. Now your Tinder's gonna be so full. Okay. Now, let's get a little bit moody and dark. Let's go the opposite direction, right? Let's, let's use shadow as our friend, right? Normally, when you're trying to set like an emotional uh, response to your viewer, right? If, they want, if you want somebody to be like trustworthy or somebody that approachable, you wanna show their eyes, you want lots of light on their face, but let's go the opposite. Let's create some shadow. And let's actually do it by doing bad light to start with. Let's go overhead. Yeah. So let's tip the light and go overhead. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the fact that she doesn't have two, re her eyes aren't too recessed, but we're going to use basically the fact that your eyes are set back a bit. By bringing the light overhead, we're going to be able to throw a shadow into her eyes from, from the light. No light in the eyes means it's uh, mysterious. It could be dangerous. You know, we have to, we'll kind of feel it out. We, we're basically hiding from the, from the viewer if we, if we cover her eyes. So um, let's do that. Let's start there. I think we'll kill these two. We'll kind of start fresh. And again, we're using the Rifa. Um, it's a good kind of soft light. It works. It's versatile. One thing that's nice about a soft box is that it is directional, right? So. Uh, the light coming out of our softbox is basically like this, bless you, is basically like this, okay? If we were using, let's say, like an umbrella or something, it would be all over the place. So we're gonna be able to relatively keep it, I can even see the line on the background. We're gonna be able to keep a lot of it off the background. Uh, we can even tilt it forward, which Dave just did. I don't think so though, because I think, uh, no, no, just, just keep it flat for now, because I actually think I like the gradation on the background. I think it'll be nice for an effect. Um, and also, remember, it's so close to her that the difference, uh, here's where a light meter could help if you really need to know exactly. Um, the difference between the light on her versus the background is gonna be a tremendous difference because of the inverse square, right? So light does math things and basically the closer it is to something, the brighter it is. I mean, it's, it's that simple. Close light to her, far from the background, it's gonna be dark back there. We have videos specifically on that if you wanna get into, actually David Bergman just did one. So if you watch this week's David Bergman video, he talks about the inverse square law. I think as close as possible, right? Yeah. Do you, if it feels too hot? Oh, she likes that. She's from the islands. Which island are you from? Long Island. <laughs> the Mexican islands. Nice. 
I don't know. You know, where, um, who, who used to watch The Love Boat, right? So they, they were always going to different places in Mexico, right? That was like a big thing. Like that was like Acapulco, that's in Mexico, right? And uh, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. yeah, Love Boat. That's what I always think of. I like that people came, uh, that have watched The Love Boat that came, because sometimes I say things, they're looking at me like I'm crazy. So I got, I got the good audience today. <laughs> no, look, classic. Oh, Fantasy Island, oh my god, so good. Oh, so good, so good. I like that. That too. We're going dark and whatever. Yeah, let's just, okay. This is not gonna be flattering, right? And we're not going for flattering. Remember, not every portrait has to be flattering. This is going to, shadow is going to emphasize any uh, imperfections. It's going to create uh, a kind of this, uh, this image that's not going to be, uh, again, idealized. And we want that because we're creating this kind of mystery or this kind of, uh, kind of a negative vibe in this image. That's what we're going for. Not every image has to be super happy. So we'll start here and let's just see what we get. Um, I think we're probably going to have to, but let's just start here. You want to step to the back of the or, or forward because I, I'm, I'm, cur I'm afraid that her top of her head might get too hot. But let's just see. She does have dark hair. Yeah, because what's going to happen is, remember, again, using the inverse square law, once the light is this close to her, the difference between her nose is twice as far from the light as the top of her head, which is actually a pretty decent distance. But luckily she has dark hair, so and now, right? Now, she's only like 15 years old. And like, you could see in this picture that she looks a lot older. No, so this is now creating a much, much more moody, scary kind of look. We have just enough light in the front to kind of light the bottom of her eyes, right? But most of her eye is in darkness, right? So it's not just that, like, bad light, like we did it wrong, where it's intentional. Like, we're basically setting it up this way. We could, if we want to give a little bit more flavor, it might be too much. Did you steal that piece of board? Where'd that guy go? <laughs> just mess with, no, I'm just kidding. We could maybe add a reflector. It might be too much, though. We'll say. Just to give her a catch light. You see that? Yeah. Is it too much? Now let's give a little more. We don't want to give too much, because if I go like that, it's going to fill most of the shadow. That's probably too much. We could also. That'll probably be too much. Yeah, let's give a, let's, the trick is finding the right spot. Yeah, there we go. I think that's it. So we're just giving enough where it's bringing that little bit of eye up, right? But it's still shadowy there, right? And remember too, that when you're doing this kind of stuff, that where you're pushing the edges, that your noise generally is in your shadows. So it's better to be a little flatter and then crunch your blacks in post than it is to go too dark. So I try to make sure um, that I'm not completely blown over. I mean, my history is pretty far over, but I actually think we're good. Like I, there's plenty of detail there that I, if I don't need to bring anything back, if anything, I'll, I'll bring it. Ooh, freaky. Uh, right? And now, the background is dark, right? Because the light is closer to her. We could, in a more traditional portrait, add separation light, add some dimension to it. But actually, the fact that the background is dark and she has dark hair uh, actually is adding a bit of isolation to her, which I think works with this particular thing. So where you normally would want to use as many lights as possible because you get paid extra for the extra lights, you might want to just use one light here, right? One light might just do what we want. It's kind of gritty, it's kind of mysterious, it's kind of a little scary, right? We see that, or it's not that at all, right? It's pretty, it's good. Okay, I'm, I'm not lying, okay, good. Up oh, variation. Yep. And the, yep. And less, okay, yeah, let's try that. Okay, so, and, and once you're there, and by the way, never do it that fast for the client. You gotta work it a little bit. They don't wanna make it look easy. So All right, like so, well, but if you get it, we can move the light back further. Like most of her faces. Just yeah, so we basically put her almost completely in shadow, right, and then you wanna tip it forward. Yeah, um, from here as well. Yeah, I'll do it from here. How's that on your head? So if I have to raise it a tiny bit too. Is that too hot for you? Yeah. Okay. No, because you're from the islands, Long Island. 
Everybody's from the islands. We're actually, isn't it Manhattan technically an island? And then there's Staten Island. Nobody admits to being from Staten Island. Is anybody here from Staten Island? Oh, wow, you admit it. Actually, Staten Island's very nice. Yeah, by the water. No, but everybody's always like, I think because it's so far to get to the city, and people don't want to admit they can't. You came all this way from Staten Island? Or you work here? I live by the ferry. Oh, right by the ferry, nice. I've actually been to Staten Island like about a dozen times, but I've only been that one spot, like that where you go from the ferry to the... <laughs> Are they really? It's like you get on the ferry, like you guys have done this, I'm sure. So if you visit New York, this is what you're supposed to do. You get on the ferry and you go to Staten Island and you see this at your liberty, you're like, oh. And then if you go fast enough, you can get right back on the next one. But if there's going to be a Ferris wheel, we'll hang out. Oh, that'd be nice. Because really, because there's nothing there. I've missed it before, taken my time, and then you're basically sitting in the, uh, the ferry station, which isn't. I mean, there's beer, but that's not really. Yeah, so now this is a bit of a different look. Now we're completely backlit. Um, oh, for some reason I'm drawing on her nose. I don't know what that was doing, okay. Nope. There we go. And now we're only using a reflected light in the front. It's a little bit mysterious as well. It's not as hardcore. I like to go hardcore, so. Subway ad? Yeah. Like Fox CSI. <laughs> Oh, oh, I thought you meant like for the sandwiches. I was like, $5 foot long. I don't see it. If you see her, say something. I would say something. Oh, I see what you're doing. This is an advanced technique. Just flip it inside. No, I put it on that. Oh, I see. And then. All right, this is her, if she's the giant cue card, yeah. you write what you want for her to do on that. Thanks for the cardboard, Seth. Earlier, Seth was like, hey, there's cardboard there if you want to use it. Poster board. Well, it's not cardboard. Okay. Next time I see one on the street, I'll take it. You should, yeah. I told you, right? Yeah. I told you. Pizza boxes. The, the thing is, like, in the studio, I always use uh, poster board um, for this kind of stuff because you can cut it and shape it, and it's relatively inexpensive. Um, the portable reflectors, like we, we use at the pop-up, are great for location because you, you don't want to be walking around with that. I mean, unless you put a sign on it, maybe, and make some money that way. Oh, interesting. Dave's over here doing stuff. Wow, that got a good reaction. <laughs> yeah, so now we've got really, it's a, it's a smidge dark, but yeah. yeah. You know, now we've got this kind of frontal light coming in. Here's where there's points where I say the, 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 the noises and the shadows, so I probably would get a bit more exposure here just to make sure, and then I would just drop it down and post if I want it to be that dark, because that's, that's, that's really, you can see we're, 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 we're touching the edge of our histogram here. You know, we don't really want to be there. Yeah, I think that's better. You can see now it's pulled back a bit. Cool. Questions, thoughts, concerns? No? Okay. Well, that's good. Easy. Let's do... Oh, hold on. You got a plan? See, I thought you were going to do this. Well, now let's do what I thought you were going to do. I just thought you were trying to rip more light in. Because you could do this and then... Yeah, because if you do this, then you can basically... Half... Uh... I was trying not to get this direct on her. Yeah, no, that's what I'm doing. So that's why I had... Yeah. There we go. Oh, I yeah, I think that'll work. The, we need the uh, uh, clip. Grab one for me. Like a like a, a close pin. Oh, wait. Yeah. Cool. Is that it? Yeah. So this. So what's happening here is we're getting like double diffused here, so it's a little darker, and now we have more light that we can kick back. Should give us a little amplification of the light. Can actually be more closer. Yeah. That should just give us a little bit more light. Yeah, slightly, slight more. But I, but or even from here, but you, you can actually probably see. I don't know if you can. Can you see through the big cameras? Seth, if you turn it back wide for us, 
you can see this line here, or is it just too blown out? Well, no, I'm just trying to show. So, oh, you can't see, it's too bright. Basically, there's a line here on the, on the poster board where this is about two stops less light than this right here. So I can use the brighter, I got it. I can use the brighter part, which is back here, to actually kick the light back in. She's throwing stuff at me. Did you see that? Everybody saw it, we're live streaming. Right, and now we're able to throw like a significantly, uh, significantly more light back. We're actually adding a little bit of flair too. That was her making a dirty look. The, 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 yeah, we're definitely making you look old. We don't ever say that to people that we're gonna do that before they come, just so you should do. So, questions, thoughts, concerns, before we change it up a little bit. Nothing, not a single concern. What's that? Good stuff, oh good, all right, good, I'm glad. All right, what's that? They want more light on their shoulders? We could do that. I mean, you could add a separation light. The reason why we didn't do that in this particular setup, I mean, actually, now that we've moved it, maybe it would be worthwhile to do it. Um, we didn't originally add separation lights because in the first setup, which is basically this one, right? I liked that basically she was isolated. Adding the separation light, we'll start to add more three-dimensionality, which is classically better, but uh, I like the isolation of the, of the lack of it. But we could try it for this, because now the light's coming from the back, we could add more shoulders. And we already have lights here, conveniently enough. Let's see what happens. Might be too much, but we'll see. What might actually be interesting here might be to kill the reefer, if we do it this way. Yeah, well, let's just turn it off and see what happens. Yeah, let's see what happens there. So, off, and then we just have to watch her nose. So you have to be very. Yeah, there we go. And then the car can. Yeah, and then we can. Yeah, and then we can bounce the light back in. Let's make it look bad, so we'll go below. I heard you say above back there. <laughs> you know what? You know what I do. Both. Let's have another card. What? Grab another card for me. I told you I was going to use them. <laughs> right? There we go. Now we got both. Now we've got kind of, it's just a tiny bit underexposed, but now we're creating, again, like a soft, we actually created a pretty soft light using hard lights because these hard lights are ripping past her, right? They're bouncing into these big cards that we have here. These are uh, on sale at Adorama for $85 each. Um, no. I mean, maybe. Would you pay that? Okay, forget it. All right. Um, and then what we're getting is kind of a nice, again, it's a little underexposed, but we're getting a, a nice kind of even light. This is the, the like, uh, I'm a lawyer, very serious uh, uh, face she's got going on there, but uh, if there's any lawyers in the audience, I'm... I'm you're a lawyer? I might need a lawyer as I was here after that. So we're probably like to stop. Yeah, you're about to stop underexposed. Now we're actually just creating like pretty light. Basically, this is what you do, like Seth had mentioned, this is like being outside. That's the sun. Yeah. And plus it's always impressive to people to use two cards at once. Ambidextrous. You can also, if you have two, you can use them like a mouth. Hi, Seth. All right, ready? Well, I thought you were going to do a proper exposure. You can build them into different stuff. Questions? Yeah. So what we did was we took Capture One, right, and we looked at the image that was underexposed, and then we adjusted using our exposure slider to see till it looked good, right? But we don't want to have to do that, even though you could do that in post to make it look fine. So what we're doing now is we're adjusting the camera to compensate for that and we're reshooting it. I like a little flare. You have to wear 15 pieces of flare. Right? Oh, interesting, you got a little light on your face. So, okay, so what we did there, just so you know, exposure-wise, because it was questions about metering earlier. So we did our sh first shot, and it was underexposed, right? We looked at it, and we were like, this is it here, right? Nope, it's here. We were like, okay, it looks good, but it's a smidge underexposed on her skin tone. So what we did was we came over to our exposure adjuster, 
which is right over here in Capture One. And again, if you had shot this in the field and you needed to fix it, this is what you would do. So we grab it and we slide it over until it looks good for us. Let's say we like it, I don't know, like right there, right? Now we're like, oh, that looks great, yay. So what we want to do is bring it back. We look at what, the, what it is, right? We look at how much we need to add. Then we go back. And then we just adjust our camera accordingly and take another shot. Now we have a proper exposure. So that's a way to kind of finesse your exposure using uh, Capture One to get the correct exposure. Um, also, if you want to, in the end, deliver like this dark, but you're nervous to shoot it so dark, you could actually shoot it the proper exposure here and then bring it down. And again, it's not really affecting the file because it's a raw file. So you could bring it down to show the client and be like, yeah, this is what it looks like. You know, and they don't know. I mean, let's say how to use Capture One. They just want the image. They don't want to, you know, they, they, don't, they don't care how you do it. So that's basically how, why I like to shoot tethered for that. Um, you can also crop it and stuff in Capture One so people can see the final image. So you don't have to be like, yeah, and post I'm going to. You can just kind of show them. Um, OK, should we do one more thing? We're running a little long, but I think that's OK, because we, we had like a small like mini shoot in the middle of that. Yes, that's for the advanced class. You guys don't get to know that. Okay, so, because um, without showing it, we will be, it would be hard to explain it, but we'll do that next time. Okay, so let's do one more quick shot. Let's take one, did we shoot, we shot really kind of pretty. Let's do something that's like very, very shadowy on her face, like really shadowy, like let's do like a, like a, like a, oh, you know what, let's do this. Let's just go like this, here we go. Let's do that like hard, like, like athletic-y, sports-y, badass. Actually, why don't you stand up? Oh, we don't have to adjust the lights. Not yet, though. <laughs> That's okay. You did it without hitting the light. That was pretty good. That's probably a bad idea. That's light enough. It'll be fine. Okay. Okay. Yeah, let's, we're going to do like kind of a more like badass, like a, oh, can you say ass on YouTube? I don't know. Yeah, can you? Valeria is actually a uh, personal trainer. Yes. So she's got the, you know, the, the physique. Yeah, and then let's do like a, maybe. So we can do like a really hard, yeah, like a three quarter, but like hard across her with the, maybe even scoot it out here so that it's a, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and you're gonna be like, Pwah. she's like, Pwah. yeah, so this is gonna be like our tough Gatorade. Yeah, I like that. Nike. Is that a shoe? Nice. I don't really have TV or anything. I mean, I have a TV, but I don't watch TV, so I don't see any of these commercials anymore. So I don't really know what people do. You're saying what? Nike does a lot of Photoshop? No, is that what you said? I, don't, I haven't seen it. Oh, 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 I see what you're saying. Seth's making an offensive comment, but I won't say what it is. It's not actually offensive, but it could be considered offensive. Yeah, it is. It's okay though. You want the light in the shop? Like yes. The yeah. Let's do it. Let's make it fucking. Ooh, did I just swear? We're going hardcore here. Oh, you know what? You know I'm looking at you. There's like a super athletic dude right here. You want me in the picture? All right. Yeah. You knew I was talking to you too. He's like, yeah, I know. Because <laughs> because it, it wasn't me. No, obviously you're you're the super athletic dude. Uh, after her, but we're gonna get you too because we have to show the difference. Yeah, pulling her hair back would be pretty cool, but we don't, I was thinking that too, but I don't think we have a means to do it, do we? Do you have a hair tie or something? Sure. Oh, we do have a means. Look at that. 
Was it on your wrist the whole time? Yeah. Yeah. Girls always have that on that. Let me see your wrist. No, you don't have one. Do you have one on your wrist? I was, I was you don't even have any hair. What are you doing? <laughs> Mm -hmm. You know, just by counting the number of uh, you know, that. But for example, if you have a um, softbox, which is uh, four times this one, what does it mean in terms of intensity? What is the math? Do you understand what I'm asking? Right, okay, sure. So basically, what he's asking is well, yeah, if you, all the lights are the same, you can use the inverse square law and be like, well, this one's closer or further, or whatever. But then you start adding things in between. You add softbox diffusion, you add whatever, and now you have to factor that in. Um, a lot of times manufacturers will list what the diffusion does. The, this this Rifa uh, does two and a half stops. They actually list that in the specs. So you would know that when you're using the diffusion, it's two and a half stops of light loss. You know, um, there's also photometrics listed on most professional stuff. So you could actually, you could theoretically without a light meter, measure things and get the whole exposures figured out using the photometrics. Um, but honestly, it comes down to uh, oh, nice. It comes down to more experience, I would say, in that sense. Like, if you're outside and you're using speed lights or you're trying to match it, you just have to kind of work with it. I generally, I try to, the light that I can't change is the light that I use as my base. That's how I think about it. So if I'm outside or I'm near windows, right, I'll set everything in my shot based on that light. And then I'll just add light and to give me the effect I want in the rest of it. Does that make sense? Because there's no exact, I mean, you could look up, okay, this gel is two stops, this gel is whatever, but you probably work with five pieces of equipment. I mean, most people don't have a ton of equipment when they're traveling around, so you'll get to know your stuff um, pretty well after a while, but you can, you, as a baseline, you can look it up. They all have specs, and they'll, they usually give transmission, so it'll say, like, it transmits 25%. So that means you know you lose two stops, because 50% and then, yeah. Does that make sense on, on some level? Oh yeah, this is looking pretty. Oh, it's always good when it works. Dave is a sculptor. Dave the sculptor. I went a little wider with the, the camera angle too, so it's... I don't like that. <laughs> the longer lens is more flattering. <laughs> we want flattering. Wow, really? Well, no, I think we want flattering because she's oh, athletic. You, athletic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No woman wants to look wide, ever. Yeah. When we do the super muscular dude, it could look, no, 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 no. Women never want to look wide. Yeah. There you go. Okay, so now, now, look a chicken forward like a badass. There you go. Hold on. Let's get a little more light on the side of her face. I'm gonna I'm gonna do a bit of a Rembrandt, I think, because I hate not seeing your eyes. <laughs> Seventy. Yeah. Oh, is it fifty before? Okay. There you go. Yeah. Try that. Very exciting. Are you afraid? That's why you're shielding your eyes? Or are we shining the light right on you? Are we shining the light right on you? Dave does that. He's mean. Or did I do it? <laughs> yeah, there we go. She's, very, she's going yeah. for Ronda Rousey. Yeah. Yeah, she's about to get a little boom. But see, we see this attitude now, right? It works. We're, we're showcasing her muscularity. Her expression is, is, is working with that. Um, yeah. And she is. So there you go. Cool. Questions, thoughts, concerns? Can we model for me? Yeah. What's your name? Arseny. Arseny? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's awesome. What kind of name is that? Russian. Russian. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you knew that? Are you Russian? You yeah. just said you were Mexican. Mexican. But you know all the Russian well, names? Like, yeah. Oh, I didn't know. She was like all excited about it. So go forward. Uh, 
Garcini is going to give a little modeling for us so we can showcase the. Yes. Well, you got clap for and everything. Why is everybody from Russia so good looking? What's going on there? <laughs> right? <laughs> My God. Is it the water or something? I'm just saying, right? Did you ever see, you ever see Rocky Three? Oh, yeah. Is he really Russian, though? Is, is Dolph Lundgren Russian? He's Swedish, right? He's not even Russian. But boy, he was built. Oh, oh, is he? Yeah, a little bit. That's another good-looking guy. He's been in a lot of terrible movies since then, though. Man, Dolph. <laughs> yeah, I know, but he, I think he just likes to be in bad movies, maybe. I don't know, because I, I, like, he just, the worst movies ever. But awesomely bad. Like, good, bad movies, right? Somebody's got to be in those. No, no, but after that, I'm saying, like, like, like he made a movie, like, last year, probably, and it was just terrible. He was in Expendables. So that's what I'm saying. He's in like like big movies, but then he's also in like these terrible. Go onto Netflix and just go Dolph Lundgren. You will see the movies I'm talking about. Oh God! But you're even naming good movies. I'm talking about bad movies. Well, I'm not a fan of The Punisher, anyways. I know, I know, I know. Yeah, yeah. Seth loves The Punisher. He's all right. <laughs> that's right. I mean, is it like just like really low budget? I mean, you just think because he's like a big star, or I think of him as a big, big, big star. He was like running around in Russia, but probably wasn't even shot there. Oh, hey, Andy. See, and I was just about to say it. Andy, Andy stalks me every single week, so I can tell you guys that uh, Adorama likes to buy used equipment. So if you guys have used equipment that you want to sell, relative to Adorama, like not your car, um, but cameras. You're traveling around the world, you want to sell a camera. Um, we're looking to buy them, so uh, come in with them if you're here. Or you can go on the website, I guess, and they'll, they'll tell you. Right? He's, he's ignoring me now. We need to buy more 4x5 cameras, because I never I, I want to buy one. So. Oh, Dave's up high. See what happens when you come here? Oh. Oh yeah. Angle. I like it. it just you gotta stick your chin out a little bit, like a chicken. Huh? Stick your chin out like a chicken a little bit. Yeah. There you go. That that really show off the structure. Man, that's. Yeah. I do just stand here while Dave does everything, right? That's pretty much what I do. Have you ever noticed that? Yeah. I like, to, I like to think of myself more of like a... Oh, Alex Trebek. Oh. Nice. Except, but I'm not as like snobby. Maybe I am. That's pretty badass. It's a little bright on the side of his head though. It is. Can we like feather them? Yeah. I think I'm just going to get them out of the shot. Yeah. No, I think it's from the rims. Or even point him down just to kill, to kill the uh, lighter skin tone, right? He has lighter hair, lighter skin tone versus her dark hair. Now it's changing our exposure. The amount of light hasn't changed, but the, what it's lighting up has. So we have to make an adjustment uh, accordingly. This is where, because uh, I sometimes get that question about different like, uh, like skin tones or different hair and stuff. This is where you have to make an adjustment. You get your basic setup using the light meter. All the light's always the same, but, it, but if something is brighter, uh, you may want to give it less light because of reflectance. Yeah, well, we're going for this kind of athletic uh, Rocky Three, right? Uh, he, I'm sorry, he lost the name. He, he did kill Apollo Creed, though. That's why we don't like him. So, uh, the, the, uh, we're, we're going for this like hardcore athletic fighter uh, feel here. So, uh, but you could be a happy fighter. You want to be a happy fighter? Huh? Can you be happy? Fighter? No. No? No, can you? If you miss a couple of shot hits in the head, you start to feel dizzy. Yeah, I hear you. Wow. There you go. What? In the previous in the previous setting, the two lights were in the frame. Now we remove them from the frame. Will it change the way the camera, the light that there is in the camera? 
Yes. Okay. So the question is, they were, we're taking him out of the frame. Yeah. It, how that affects it? Well, yes and no. I mean, he did two things. He took them out of the frame, but he also feathered them so that we would get less intensity on the side. Um, just as a as a general composition thing, though, having the bright lights in the background definitely changes the feel that the that the uh, the camera has, and you might get lens flare from it. Although we weren't really flaring. Yeah. Without his glasses, he's got a great face, right? I can pick him. Could you, would you take a, no, I love his glasses, though. Can we try one without your glasses? Do you mind? I mean, I like them. Can I wear them? <laughs> Hell yeah. Oh, wow, you actually have terrible vision, because you're almost as bad as me. What do you think? I can never pull off cool glasses, right? They don't look good, do they? Tell me the truth. Not on me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I, can't, I can't pull it off. Oh, they're nice. Very corporate. <laughs> I like the, the, the machine gun facing yeah. away from the light. Wow. Cool. Yeah, that's pretty badass. Okay, good. Thank you so much. Yep. That's, that was all planned. This is actually a, a, uh, an electrical outlet uh, thingy, right? I don't know. I find it on the road. Oh, yeah. That's, you found it on the road. See? Awesome. Thank you. Good looks and great style. All right. Awesome. So. That gave us that look, and, and you know, and again, that's uh, accentuating the athleticism, you know, whether it be in the female model or the male model, and yeah, it looks pretty cool. Uh, questions, thoughts, concerns? Yes. Yes. Uh, for example, it has angular uh, face, mm -hmm. so you, we have to take that in consideration when we do the lighting so for a, a more cheap and the. Uh, mm -hmm. right? right. So if if the if your subject was did not have as much of an angular face. Um, yeah, you, you might have to change the lights a little bit. Obviously, if you're shooting for a subject, you know who you're shooting. This is a nice way to light somebody with an angular face because it really uh, exemplifies it. However, if they had a rounded face, this would still work. It would just, you know, you just have to change the angle of the light to get it to look satisfying. It wouldn't look exactly the same, yeah. Uh, you know, a lot of people feel that they are fat. Uh, yeah. Do you think uh, it's possible to make them skinnier just with the light? Um, Okay, good. Now, 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 now I'm going to get philosophical for a second. <laughs> so the question is, a lot of people think that they're too fat. So is it, and this is a question I get a lot. Is it possible to make them look skinnier with the light? Yes, on some level you can. However, it's your job as a photographer to make people feel comfortable and make them happy with the way they look. You should, if somebody comes to me and says, I want to look completely different, I, I, don't, I don't do that. I want to shoot people the way they look, and I pick out things about them that are positive, and I say, but you have this that's great, and I focus on that part of them. If you're a very heavy set person, you're not going to stand in a bikini or whatever if you're a woman like outside, and, unless you're happy with the way your body looks. That's just not, you, you don't shoot somebody like that if they're trying to look like four sizes too small. You find the thing about them that is special, the thing that makes them uh, stand out, and that's what you focus on. So while you can make people th seem thinner with lighting or, or heavier or lens choice, you should always try to find the thing about somebody so that when they look at that picture, it still looks like them. You know, that, that, that's, again, now I'm, that's more uh, personal philosophy than technical, um, but in order to make somebody look thinner, to give you that thing, Basically, hard light from the back will eliminate detail, which will make them look thinner. A singular light from the center, shadows also do that. So you can do it, but I would try to get people to feel comfortable with how they look in general and make accentuate what's great about them instead of trying to hide what's not. So that's, that's my uh, overall personal philosophical thing. There you go. I'll get off the soapbox now. Anyways, any other questions? No. Okay, cool. So, uh, we are breaking. Well, we ran a little bit late. That's okay. Yeah. We'll be back at 2 if people are around. Um, if not, next week we're doing an open shoot. So, if you've never been to an open shoot before, bring your camera. Bring a lens, memory card, a good attitude. We're going to have several models. Um, we're going to have some different lighting setups from Photoflex. They're uh, bringing some uh, modifiers and stuff. And we're basically going to set up a couple of scenarios. And you guys can bring your cameras. Um, and photograph the, the, the models to get some experience using the gear. So that's always fun. Just uh, sign up if you haven't already uh, at uh, adorama.com slash events. And uh, yeah, that's next week, open shoot. The week after that, which is the 25th, we're doing beauty photography. So if that's something you're very much interested in, uh, we're going to do a little more of an elaborate uh, 
beauty photography type tutorial. Uh, we will probably use flash equipment for that. Okay, guys. Thanks. Ooh. Mother, clapping for you.